Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well today, something slightly different, I want to talk about a new subject. Um, some of you will have seen my recent uh, videos, uh, the pre-Christmas vid where I have to do this horrendous dusting job on my cabinets, I hate it. But, you may have noticed uh, certainly with the military figures that I had with the tanks and things, uh, on the armoured vehicles, um, that we had a bit of a diorama scene, but it wasn't really a proper diorama scene. Um, but I also did talk about it uh, when we dropped down onto the aircraft and I talked about how you can cheat the, uh, the dust being as obvious if you've got a glass cabinet like me. It becomes so obvious very quickly in a matter of days or weeks if you've cleaned it. Um, but I talked about diorama bases, and we're going to talk about those today. So, but before we get into that, I just wanted to show you something that, that sort of sums up the thing, uh, that makes, makes dioramas worthwhile. Um, now, I'm not a diorama builder. I don't have the experience or skill, or I don't think I've ever done Yes, I have done one once. I did, um, actually, when I was younger, I did a um, Matchbox ME BF109E crash landed in the field with the props bent back, you know, and a soldier guard in it. Um, I pity I haven't got any photos sadly to show you that, I don't think I took any at the time, um, don't think I had a camera, but anyway, those were the days, eh? Anyway, moving on, it, it just sums up that how animated it was, and this was um, so popular that the local model shop owner, um, as I told the story once previously, he was, he said, Pl please Peter, can I put it in the window for a few weeks? And we did, we had it in the window for about a month and a half, two months. Um, uh, luckily not in the summer, so I didn't get too much UV light on it, but yeah, and it was really, uh, really popular. People came up to me and said, oh, you did that. Oh, yeah, it's really good. And it's really the only attempt I made at it, and I've never really done it since properly. Because I find, look, probably like you do, that they take a lot of time and different skill set, and, you know, uh, I marvel at people who are good at it, you know. Anybody from Night Shift, even to people like Andy, Andy's Hobby Headquarters, they do it really well, you know, and I think... I haven't got all those materials and it's too much hassle. So we're going to talk about how we can cheat our way to a diorama today and see if we can find a quick, easy way that involves no work and leaves more time for beer. Oh, alcohol, yes. Well, it's Christmas. I, mean, I thought I'd have a drink. We'll have some beer in a little while. But first, let me show you this. So here we've got classic matchbox kit. Whoops. Uh, here it's a little diorama, of course, because they're famous for this, and this is something we've talked about on my channel a great deal. The matchbox dioramas are absolutely brilliant, and of course you get a street scene. And you're probably wondering why, if I'm talking about dioramas, why it doesn't seem to have been painted. Well, it's worse than that, actually. It hasn't been glued either. <laughs> uh, this is actually um, a diorama that was missing from my kit. Uh, it's the matchbox Puma Armoured Car, of course. Um, I want to tell you, if you saw the review of this kit, I did about, I don't know, 12, 18 months ago, um, and somebody, very kindly, in fact it was Jason from Model Kit Stuff, who's got a very good YouTube channel on modelling, I can recommend to you, he took pity on me because I bought this and uh, somebody on eBay had sold it me saying it was in mint condition. Didn't They omitted to mention that it had no diary. I mean, it's half the kit nearly, you know, the actual base. It's quite a lot of the plastic that's in the kit and it didn't come with it. And I complained and I got a discount, but that didn't help me get the diorama. So the little puma here, it's been sitting there in the cabinet on its own rather forlornly. And I moaned about this in my video. And Jason heard this and said, look, don't worry, I've got a spare one you can have. So I don't know whether he had a bit of a tragedy with the actual kit or he had the opposite problem where the bits of kit were missing of the actual armoured car. But anyway, thanks very much, Jason. I am working on it now. It's been, it's been pinned to my notice board for many months. As you can see, Christmas is coming. I'm going to have a few hours spare, so I'll zoom you in again. Uh, you can tell that uh, I am going to start working on it. Um, but the point of the, the reason for showing it, really, is to talk about how a little diorama, even this one that's unpainted, just how much it sort of lifts the scene, you know? It, it turns a, a, a fairly, you know, almost two-dimensional, you might argue. It's, th it's three-dimensional, literally, but uh, there's nothing else to it. It's a nice little armoured car, nicely painted, yes, fine. But there's not much else to it. And that diorama, you put it in the middle of that scene, hopefully they're not falling over, <laughs> put it in the middle of that scene, and suddenly, <laughs> he doesn't want to stand up, he really doesn't, does he? There we go. Got a bit of a lean to this chap. Uh, and suddenly you've got a, a street scene. It's actually supposed to be the street scene in Arnhem. Now I'll be painting this up, gluing it all, painting it up, and weathering it. But it reminded me 
very much that this is something that a lot of modellers, me included really, shy away from. We were a bit nervous about doing figures, quite a lot of us. Um, we're even more nervous about dioramas, I think. So you can see behind we've got the, uh, I'll move the, uh, the little matchbox to one side, hopefully without any more falling over. There we go. In the background we've got the, uh, some of these figures that I had in my cabinet that I did a bit of a show round of recently before I, before I got them all dusted up. And you can see how these figures and little vehicles added together with aircraft do create a bit of a scene. Um, and all that's missing is some, is some sort of proper diorama background uh, for them to sit on. So, let's move these in a bit because they're a bit, a bit obscure over there. Move them over, the chat with cigarette, officer, and his colleague. And of course we've got the, uh, the VF109 G6. There we go. So you can see, can't you, that it really does, you know, it lifts it, having the figures. So there's just one more element missing, and that's what we're actually going to talk about. So, first of all, I would like to uh, have a drink. <laughs> it's Christmas time. Now, uh, what was I drinking the other day? I was drinking, what was it, Piers Porter, some awful cheap German wine from the, from the 1980s, probably been lost in a cellar. Well, today we're on some beer. Uh, and it is, you like this, this is a funny one. This is Pig in Drunk from the Great British Cellar, cottagedelight.co.uk. Look at that, there you go. Not, not doing an advert for them, but it seems quite nice. It says, This little piggy is hogging all the beer. Uh, as happy as a pig in muck, it says. Uh, premium golden premium ale, smooth multi flavour, refreshing, crisp finish, and it's made in Great Britain. Sounds brilliant. Oh, it's the Staffordshire Moorlands Brewery. Now, what are they? are better known for another beer. I can't think which one it is, but that's not far from me, actually. So that's actually quite, probably one of the most local breweries to where I live. So I hope you won't mind, as it's Christmas, if I have a little, a little sip. I'm not going to... Don't worry, I'm not going to be like all those certain other modelling channels where they get raving drunk, and by the end, even this week I've seen one, by the end of the show, I can barely string a sentence together. I'm just going to have a sip or two. There we are. Fresh, fresh. Over there. You see, it's Christmas. We can enjoy a little drink together. Why not? We're all adults here. I won't have too much. Because I have another video to shoot, and as I say, I don't want to end up like certain people drinking too much and having whiskey chases and all sorts. Some people do. It's disgraceful. Anyway, a very merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, I've got it in the Estrella Dan glass, but it's nice glasses. Merry Christmas. Hope you've all got a drink and enjoying a, a bit of festive frivolity yourselves. Cheers. Oh, that's really nice. It's quite sweet. Yeah, very golden, very golden hops, you know. Mm. Now, I'm going to remember not to put this somewhere where it's going to get flown off. Have more entertainment like we had back in the summer with my champagne flying everywhere and smash glass zooming around in all directions. I'm going to put it there where it's completely safe, out of reach. So, you will also notice I have here, which I haven't introduced yet, I've got my lovely uh, MiG-25 Foxbat, uh, which I'll zoom in a little bit for, but be very careful this, it's got a very delicate undercarriage, but uh, I'll zoom you in, a little bit trouble my zoom again, it's been a bit reluctant. So the Foxbat, again, it sits, you know, in the cabinet, or if you put them on a the green surface like this, yes, it looks very nice, doesn't it? But something is critically missing here, and we've got to find a way to, to put that right. So. I have the solution, I've got several to show you. Here we have, from a company called, we can do a plug here, Coastal Kits, British company, in Blackpool of all places, so it's a place I used to live actually, years and years ago when I was little. We have a Soviet airfield, hex tarmac display base. Suddenly we hopefully can sort of bring our little, our little aeroplane, which I think put a big effort into building, we can build that, bring that to life, with a hexagonal, uh, a hexagonal paved Soviet runway. Let's see how this works out. So if I, that's the first time I've opened it as well. Let's just see if I can pop that on here. See if it looks better on there. Uh, I have to say that the MiG-25 is actually a big aircraft, so it kind of pity they didn't make a bigger one. But 
the trouble is they do these in different scales and they do they scale them up so you can't really go for the 48 scale one because that will look a bit daft because the uh, the hexagonal paving will just be too big but doesn't that look better i mean really let's just um move that one out just over here for now move them across oops <laughs> always happens doesn't it figures fall over so let's have a look at that now we've got a proper diorama base for it suddenly suddenly it does seem to have and obviously you can have vehicles I realise you wouldn't you wouldn't have a cupboard bargain, bargain but you know you put a vehicle in the scene and suddenly you've got your your kit has almost come to life your model is in a three-dimensional scene it creates a bit of a story a talking point and you know, in this case, it's the Soviets ignore the German Kubel wagon, but you've got a nice little, a nice little diorama has been created. And yeah, number of hours effort nil, number of minutes effort one. Unwrapping the bag is all you had to do. So it kind of works, doesn't it? Really, I mean, that's absolutely amazing. Let's try and. Uh, Let's try a few others because I've bought I've bought a small collection of them actually. Because I, as you saw with the cabinet video, yeah, it's I don't like the way that the dust builds up and it's on glass. I think it works on some things. When you've got the racing cars, it's not so bad. But I think when you've got the armored vehicles or the aircraft, mm, doesn't really work. Now here we've got uh, some of you may have seen this in the past because it's been sitting here for a while. So this is the uh, British aircraft carrier uh, illustrious stroke. Uh, uh, invincible class carrier deck uh, and they call it illustrious and this is for the 48 scale so that one so I'll just explain so that is a 70 second scale and it is to the correct scale I've got to say it's wonderful you know and it cost I think 19 pen or thereabouts and it's really brought that to life completely I mean it, it becomes a different model almost it really does it it throws it into uh, almost a different dimension you could say a bit more light in here. Look at that. It's nice, isn't it? For, for almost no money and absolutely no effort, you've now got put that in the cabinet, and suddenly it looks really nice. And people say, "Oh yeah, Soviet, you know, Soviet airfield uh, hexagonal paving. Yeah, very good, very good." So it works. It works, and that that's minimal cost, zero effort for those of us that don't have the time or like me, the skill. <laughs> It's brilliant, isn't it? So I recommend these. So here we've got the one for the Invisible. This is the one for my Sea Harrier, which I can't show because I haven't built it yet. Um, so that's that's ideal if you've got, you know, a British Sea Harrier or a Wessex or something like that, or a Lynx, uh, anything else? Sea King, Sea King. They'll all go on there, very nicely. So I'll leave that one to one side. And then we'll have a look at these others. So you'll have seen my 32nd uh, scale Spitfire kit. But these are, I think these are specifically for 48 scale, actually. Um, now let me take this one out. So here we've got, this is a grass display, ideal for your Spitfire. Uh, and it's 132. Okay. So the Spitfire could equally go on this. So I've got a 132 version here. Now you can, when you've got things like grass, it doesn't matter. You can mix and match it because the grass scale is not, it's not so critical as it is with things like paving or, you know, um, blocks of concrete and things like that where it becomes a bit obvious. But well, that's a nice one. I'm going to take that one out. So if you just bear with me for a second, we we'll unwrap that one. You can use this. Really. I don't think the scale is very critical. We can put our 148 scale. Uh, whoops. Sorry. Get that messed up. There we go. 148 scale uh, Luftwaffe scene that can easily go on there. Making a bit of oops, a little bit of space. Careful. So we can have a move our Kubel wagon. We can have a Kubel wagon there. We can have our, uh, you know, you can spread it out and you can create a nice diorama here. Oops, doesn't understand, does he? Really make it. You know, you can have several vehicles in this one. And suddenly it just it just all comes to life, doesn't it? Really. Comes to life, so uh, th that will work for 30 second scale or you know, or for 32. Obviously, with 32, that's going to be quite crowded. And the nice thing about that is you can't, the, the grass is not scaled such, it's not a problem. 
So you could have, you know, other, a couple of other armoured cars. You have a Ketten Crown or, I don't know, you know, maybe even a tank in the background or a, a fuel truck or something. All in the scene. It works a treat, doesn't it? Let's have a closer look. So what I'll do, I'll move my MiG. I'll try and put that. That's a very fancy one to say for it, which I do. I do like that MiG. That really does work, doesn't it? Look at that. Hey, how about that? That really does the trick. Bear with me, I'm going to move out of shot for a second. Right, <clears throat> so, push this back into the centre of the frame to get maximum benefit. And there we are. So we can have our like, ME109. It's got, it's got the guy's service in it, as you can probably see. And we've got our little figures. These are the ICM, so I'm sure somebody's going to ask me. It's the ICM. Uh, Luftwaffe crew, uh, um, airman pilots crew, and they are very, very nice figures, I've got to say. So there you go. It just brings the whole thing to life, doesn't it, really? Suddenly it's a proper diorama. You haven't had to do any work at all. And I think these are, I think these are 20, 22 pound or 25 pound, they're about to, I can't remember. I'll give you the um, I'll give you the uh, link to their website, Coastal Kits. I actually went to Telford to buy a load of these from them, but unfortunately they weren't there this year. So I, I did it just via the website. Um, they we're a bit delayed, but then we've got some UK postal issues at the moment, and the least said about it, the better. Then we've got a couple of others. Now here we've got um, this is interesting. Now I've got this for my uh, what scale are they saying? Yeah, they're saying it's 48 scale. So this is the Marsden matting. This is this aluminium matting that the American Seabees, uh, the American engineers for the uh, for the US Marines and the 8th Air Force used to use, especially when they were in the Far East. And I got this particularly because I wanted to use it for my P-38 Lightning. Uh, because I thought it would be ideal. And what you get is you get this... Um, Again, I'll need to take it out because of the reflection. You get this wonderful matting effect, aluminium sheeting effect, that is put down to enable the aircraft to have a runway, even on the roughest of surfaces. Uh, oh, there. One second, it's not going to leave. Okay, here we go. So look what we got here. So we've got this really nice, accurate looking, Marsden matting, if you've seen in close. You can see it really has got some brilliant effects. Uh, and you know, you put your lightning or your corsair on there. I mean again, that wouldn't look at that wouldn't look wrong because it's a big A3 size this. It's huge, you know, they're really big, aren't they? You could put again, cheating a little bit here, but you could put your Mustangs on there, or 30 second scale I'm talking. Get a 30 second scale uh, Mustang or a Corsair, put that on there, it won't look out of place, it'll look absolutely fine. But I must admit, I bought it from a Lightning, so if you've got a P38 Lightning, this is absolutely ideal for it, especially if it's Far Eastern colours. Um, but they use them in Normandy as well, these, they weren't, they weren't just used in the Far East. Uh, certainly uh, after D-Day, they had some no time at all, they needed to get their airfields up and running, and they often just slap this stuff down uh, and run it in, uh, and it was in sections like rails you know and they just plonk it out there unroll it um, and off they went so that's a really nice realistic looking uh, bit of let's put it with it this is obviously a 48 scale though it's a German one but again you know it gives you an idea um, as I say uh, a bigger kit like a lightning it looked brilliant on it absolutely perfect for that so that's another good one we'll pop that back over there then what have we got? We have got some more modern-ish stuff. Uh, now there's one here I won't show you because you've probably already seen it. Isn't that? that one, I think. This one is the sort of big paved area, and it's what do they call it? They call it Airfield 12. They, they show a modern uh, Rafale fighter on it. Could be anything really, though. I mean, this, this could be anywhere. It's just big paving, and again, you you could get away with this um, at 30 second scale or 48 scale. It would work for both, I think, quite well. Uh, and you can see that it's 
just a paved area, you know. I mean, I've got, this, I think it's the same one that I've got my ME163 Comet on, the, uh, the main kit. 30 second scale, and that looks great on this, and I've also got the V2 rocket with it, you probably saw in the other video. So that works really well for lots of different scenarios. Phantoms, you can put Jaguars, Arias, Tornadoes, Mirages, anything really. Anything you like uh, will go with that. Not so much the Russian stuff, because they do have, tend to have this hexagonal design. But even so, you know, um, it's just a, it's just a, like a concrete flagged apron area for aircraft. So again, 137 no 148 will work with that one. So that's very good. Then we've got one that's got a bit of that, but then it's got a bit of sort of runway as well with it. So I'll take this one out so you can see it better. Um, quite pleased the bolt is. So I think once I, get, once I get these in the cabinet, the models on, it's going to make my cabinet look quite different. It's going to lift the model. The only downside in the cabinet is that it does block the light from above. So it's not so, it's not so much a problem further down, but in the middle of the cabinet it will prevent light from shining through from the top lights. But I think I can live with that. So it's got sufficient lighting, it won't be a major problem. But look at that. So you've got, you can have your aircraft, a jet probably there, and then you've actually you've got your actual runway here. You can place one on the runway, one on the side. If you're doing 48 scale, I don't know, like Spitfire or a... Uh, maybe something small like a Harrier, fully escape Harrier, because uh, it's more of a modern style this one, really, rather than Spitfires. Vehicles, you know, you could have a vehicle here and you could have the aircraft on there. It'll look fantastic, won't it? I mean, e equally, you could put your, uh, put the Fox back, let's just bring the Fox back, back in and see what it looks like if we do that. Now, I know it's not so, much, not so obviously a Soviet style, but it just shows that you can get figures around it, refueling, you know, little jeeps or truck, you know. The world's your oyster, the creativity is entirely up to you, but it just gives you this depth and perspective for figures and characters and small vehicles to go on that will really, really work. So we'll pop him over there, we'll pop that one to the side, so that's another one. Um, I think I got this with the tornado in mind actually, to be honest. And then there's this one, the last one, which is the, it's a kind of a like, um, more of a sandy Middle Eastern style, like you might get Saudi Arabia or in uh, Afghanistan perhaps, yeah, uh, Camp Bastion style. Uh, I think that that's what they really intended with this one. So I was thinking, as it actually shows, shows the A10 on the back, let me show you that. It shows the A10, and I thought, yeah, that would, that would go well with the A10. Uh, I've got the 48 scale A10, I've got the Hobby Boss one, uh, A10C. And again, this it will work quite nicely, you know, especially with uh, some American, French and British jets. Uh, I think that would go rather well. It's very faded and bleachy looking, sort of a... Or, or indeed Israeli jets as well, something else, I forgot about the Israelis, that would, uh, Mirages and things, you know, F-15s, that sort of thing, F-16s, world's your oyster, isn't it, really? So I thought you'd like to see those, really. Um, I just thought it would be something a little bit, a bit different. It just gives um, an extra dimension, a sort of life to your kits to put them on something like that. It really does bring them up to to look quite different um, and it's just, just a different perspective and I think it's worth considering. So I say I'll leave the uh, the uh, the link to the company Coastal Kits. Others are available. I, I'm not I'm not getting any commission from Coastal Kits. I didn't even get a discount. Um, and I say I did have to chase them a bit because it went to, they went a bit astray thanks to the Royal Mail but came in the end. And yeah um, once I've got those in the cabinet, under the lights, uh, it, it kind of makes you want to add things to it. It makes you want to add figures. And I think that for those of us that are a bit nervous, as I've, I've always been historically in the past, it, it, it does make you think, and think, well, I can put more figures into this. You know, we could have... We've got some people here. Let's move them around a bit. There you go. Suddenly you've got this extra dimension. Vehicles. It just seems to... Bring a life and breathe a new look to your to your finished kits, uh, and it just makes them more interesting, more of a talking point, etc. 
Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I'm enjoying the pigging drunk. I'm, I'm not pigging drunk, I have to say, but I thought you might... Uh, uh, I thought I'd just share what I was trying out. Mm. It's a very... it's quite a summery beer, actually. It almost reminds me of summer. It's very golden and hoppy, golden hops. Very, very nice. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and a bit, something a bit different over Christmas, so... Think about it, because if you've got some lovely kits uh, as Christmas gifts, then perhaps this is the sort of extra you need to you need to go for. I've been um, I'm building the Sea Harrier at the moment, the 48 scale one from Kinetic, and I've just been doing the cockpit, and I've, I've got one of these um, Edward Zoom sets, and I've got to be honest, I'm starting to get a bit frustrated with them. I find that they are it's not a criticism really of Edward at all this. But I just find that these PE sets, they're, they're hard work and you've got these different glues and it just slows everything down and then it seems to affect the fit of things and you, you, saw, you always seem to solve one problem and create two or three others um, and I'm getting a little bit to the point that in some kits they, need, they do need these uh, uplifts because the interiors are so plain but there's quite a lot of kits coming out now from Tamiyar and... ICM and Great Wall Hobby and people like that, where the, the kit is really probably doesn't really need uh, any additional aftermarket, um, and therefore you can have a simpler build and perhaps focus more on how you present it like this. Um, you know, giving yourself a little bit more of a, a display, uh, sort of a you know the sort of thing you see at Telford, a bit more diorama, a bit more display, a bit more fun. So it's food for thought, you know, instead of spending all our money on, as well, I'm as guilty as anybody, instead of spending all our money on aftermarket and this, that, and that, many of which you don't need, and then you, you're in the middle of the bill and you're thinking, why did I buy this? Because it is complicating things horribly. And I've started to find that with a few, so I think I'm going to be, I'm not saying I won't buy any aftermarket, but I think I'll be more selective, and I'm, I'm a bit reluctant with PE, I'm finding it really quite a pain in the backside to use, and I'm hoping that you can get these... Um, fabric harnesses and seat belts and things. I'm moving more toward those because they're a little bit easier to work with than PE is. Uh, easier to paint, etc, etc. So that's that's the way I'm going to roll, I think, in the future. Anyway, enough of me for today. Hope you found that a little bit of a, an interesting bite-sized chat that's uh, something visual to look at that's a bit, a bit different over the Christmas period. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll tune in in the not-too-distant future for my next video as and when it becomes available and in the meantime i just wish you all a very merry christmas thank you for joining me hope you have a happy new year look after yourselves and bye for now